Welcome to everyone to this webinar on the practical methods for DRR investment acceleration uh, through organizing uh, the DRR strategy in the local perspective. Uh, this is part of, of the series of webinars that we have brought to you uh, as part of the Making Cities Resilient 2030 or the MCR 2030, which uh, many of you may know is the successor of the Making Cities Resilient campaign. The MCR 2030 was uh, op uh, became operational uh, as of 1st January of this year and will extend all the way to 2030. And uh, today, we have one of the core partners uh, of uh, MCR 2030 with us, uh, uh, which is uh, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, and with them is the Asian Disaster Reduction Center. Um, they will be uh, the speakers, uh, are Dr. Kozo Nagami, the group director for disaster risk reduction and deputy director general, global environment department, JICA. And, Mr. Masaru Arakida, uh, Director, Research Department of the Asian Disaster Reduction Center or ADRC. So they will be talking about uh, the eight steps methodology for developing local DRR strategies and how this can help to accelerate investments uh, and also uh, give some examples. Uh, and all of these, uh, the tools and the, and the technical skills that uh, they will talk about are uh, available uh, through the MCR 2030 also. Um, so I see we have participants from all around the world, even from Latin America, though the time is a bit difficult there, but still. So it is good to see um, uh, this large group. Uh, so without... Um, uh, further ado, I hand over to uh, Nagami-san. Uh, welcome, and uh, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Sanjaya, and uh, uh, very much welcome, everybody, uh, participating in today's uh, uh, webinar, cooperating with uh, uh, UNDRR and uh, uh, Incheon Office and uh, uh, other offices and uh, ADRC today. Uh, we will uh, share with you how uh, we can tackle with uh, uh, disaster risk reduction investment uh, acceleration uh, with uh, you know systematic thinking and uh, organizing a tool, we call it as a eight step. And uh, uh, we would really like to share this kind of, you know, uh, method uh, with uh, all uh, interested partners and uh, uh, individuals uh, who really want to accelerate uh, their investment until the end, our target year of 2020. 30 for the Sendai framework. Okay, let me then uh, go with uh, uh, my presentation. Uh, here, the, you know, uh, we have three uh, sections in my presentation. And the first one, uh, I, I'd like to share with you how JICA is setting up the uh, our strategy for the disaster risk reduction and build back better. We call it JICA's global agenda. Uh, in, in total, we have uh, 20 global agendas in JICA. We have a multi-sector, uh, multi other you know, departments as well in, in, in internally in JICA. And we have so many kinds of operations and the DRR and BBB is one of the 20 uh, agenda. 
Here, we'd like to re uh, review uh, what is the disaster and what is the disaster risk here. Uh, one thing we have to keep in our mind, a uh, disaster and the disaster risk has a multi-stage uh, characteristic. It, it has a certain sync sequence among the risk factors. Uh, um, you know, all of us already know hazard, exposure, and vulnerability, the three core uh, elements of the disaster risk. But uh, it has a certain sequence starting from hazard, and it our society is exposed to the hazard, and uh, our so society's vulnerability is also, uh, you know, increasing or you know the 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 sub subsiding uh, the the you know coming the uh, effect or consequence will be uh, decided by our so human society's vulnerability itself. So this is the mechanism or cascading systematic mechanism of disaster and disaster risk. Multi-stage one thing. And the other thing is, you know, a multi-dimension characteristic of uh, disaster risk. Hazard and exposure, it's external to our societies and the extrinsic elements of the disaster risk. And the climate change is also increasing the frequency and the intensity of the hazard itself. And that uh, hazard and exposure trigger the cascading effect of the disaster and disaster risk coming to the intrinsic element of the disaster risk, which is the vulnerability. Vulnerability has a very multi dimension. One thing is physical, the other thing is economic, social, and it's not limited to those three. Uh, environmental, institutional, and uh, 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 other aspects like uh, uh, cultural as well. So those are all our intrinsic society's vulnerability. So those, you know, uh, elements are uh, reflecting each other and uh, coming to the uh, uh, subsequent uh, final damage and losses. And it will be in a spiral to reflecting with, uh, affecting with each other. And these are the you know, uh, attributions of uh, uh, risk factors according to Bilkman as uh, most of us already know. And the JICA's global agenda is uh, three pillars we have. And the disaster risk is a crucial fundamental condition for human security and uh, SDGs as well. And uh, now the uh, damage and losses are uh, increasing, not only due to the, our development uh, behavior such as you know haphazard urbanization and you know non risk informed development, but also climate change is you know increasing the hazard and the impact of the uh, hazard to our society. And we have three clusters. One thing is one pillar. First pillar is. Uh, pre-disaster investment for uh, the capital concentration uh, centers, particularly in cities. The second thing is the establishment of the DR institutions for understanding disaster risk and strengthening disaster risk governance. And third thing is the securing Build Back Better. Build Back Better has very profound implications, but uh, in our DR, group, uh, we are somehow focusing on how we can uh, reduce the disaster risk in course of the uh, recovery after the disaster occurs. 
And this is a type of DRR investment. Uh, the upper part is a highly controllable type of hazard we are talking about, like a flood, landslides, storm surge. These are controllable with uh, structural measures. In these types of hazard, we, for, we put the higher priority on the DRR infrastructure, such as uh, flood control measures, sediment control measures, and coastal conservation measures, which is uh, structural measures. And the critical infrastructure strengthening, uh, lifeline infrastructure, and the school and the hospitals. So in order for us to tackle is uh, this kind of you know, flood and landslide storm surge, we have to more deal with the structural measures. Why? On the other hand, uh, the seismic volcanic eruption, these are not controllable enough by the humankind. So in these cases, we put our uh, priority in the critical infrastructure uh, resilience en enhancement. Like uh, not only the lifeline and the transportation, electricity, was a supply, telecommunication, but also the school and the hospital as well. And you know, the uh, cluster one, two, three pillars are closely uh, tied with uh, other global issues like human security, SDG. And our cluster one and cluster two, if we map those uh, uh, pillars on the Birkman's uh, risk attributions, we, ex we can explain like this. We, the cluster one is dealing with the temporal spatial exposure control and the physical susceptibility uh, reduction. This is cluster one. And uh, on the other hand, uh, cluster two is dealing with more uh, capacity aspect or the uh, capability aspects of our society. So th these combinations are very inevitable to uh, efficiently and uh, rationally uh, dealing with the disaster risk. And uh, of course, uh, if we want to uh, promote these uh, global agenda or clusters or you know, these uh, strategies, we have to work together with their uh, partner uh, institutions all over the world. And these are the, you know, mapped uh, our uh, historical accumulation of our partnerships in the world. This is the Caribbean, you know, Latin American, and uh, this is African and the Middle East countries. So as you can see, we have so much accumulation of our uh, historical cooperation uh, relationships with uh, those institutions. And we really want to uh, enhance and continue this uh, cooperation assets for the further uh, strengthening of uh, uh, DRR investments in the world. And second part is a systematic DRR strategy formulation procedures. Uh, we have to start from how we recognize or understand the disaster risk first. That is a very crucial part. And uh, for the flood, uh, based on the probability and the intensity, uh, we have to estimate uh, how, how much will be the disaster risk uh, according to the each level of hazard to our society. Low layer, middle layer disaster risk, and high layer risk. And the uh, earthquake also, we have to do the similar thing. But uh, we have to remind ourselves that is always increasing with the urbanization and climate change. And second step, we have to understand where we are now for the disaster risk reduction. If our reduced uh, risk level is like this, in the lower layer le le uh, level, middle layer level, and the high layer level. We have to position ourselves, the current uh, position. 
that is second step. And we have to target the ultimate goal of the disaster risk reduction by the particularly for the uh, structural measures. That is the you know, borderline of uh, extensive risk and intensive risk. That is the, you know, should be decided by the each uh, government, a uh, central government, as uh, uh, that country's uh, kind of, you know, uh, strategy or philosophy to deal with the uh, disaster risk. And uh, we have in our mind that uh, that every country is following this S curve to the end of the. Uh, DRR national strategy. And uh, each country has a different stage. And uh, the path or of the S cup, how, what level or what, which part we are now in is depending on the historical accumulated disaster risk reduction efforts in each country. And the third step, uh, we have to understand how we could come until now for the disaster risk reduction like this for the country X. And how we are now, we will go from now until the end. That is a plan or strategy for the mid-term, long-term, short-term plan of the disaster risk reduction. So both aspects we have to understand. And uh, we have to recognize how much residual extensive risk we have in front of us currently. And our first pillar, structural DR measure, uh, should be expedited as the first priority to the end of the disaster risk reduction for the extensive part. That is one thing, but in the reality, we have the residual extensive risk in front of us. That is the reality in this world. So we have to also consider how we can actually deal with the existing residual risk. That is the uh, pillar number two. And the public responsibility has a you know, basic responsibility for the structural measures, of course. And for the residual risk, we have to work together also with the NGOs and private sectors and CSO. From now, I'm gonna you know, uh, explain you how we are now working with the other, uh, each country uh, depicting the you know, how, what we have done for the uh, Philippines case. And you know, eight step is a kind of organizing, overarching, organizing, integrating tool of these two periods. First one is the uh, structural measures to minimize the residual risk in front of us. And uh, we are going to uh, uh, explain you about the Metro Manila case, uh, how we have done so far. And uh, for the but second part, how we can manage the residual risk, that is the cluster two. And we have to uh, set up the local DRR plan, how we can manage the existing residual risk. And A step is the key for the organizing the total risk reduction efforts. And this is you know, how we have done uh, for the uh, Metropolitan Manila. Uh, together, uh, you know, JICA had supported Philippines government. Philippine government made a very good effort in this Manila metropolitan areas. Uh, the first intervention, the, the structure measure was the uh, Mangahan floodway which was constructed with the support of JICA, 1988. And uh, you know, we still have the series of uh, continuation of the uh, structural measures even now uh, to the Pacific Maritime River Channel Improvement Project 4, stage four. We are now in the four, four, stage four. 
So as you can see, more than 30 years, if we count from the, you know, setting up the master plan of the uh, Pacific Maritime River, more than 30 or 40 years of, uh, you know, uh, effort has been made for reducing the fundamental part of the extensive risk. And that effort uh, proved the effect, impact in the uh, past uh, typhoon and flood case. This is an example of Ulysses uh, last year, no November. As you can see, left hand side map is without the 30 year intervention, structural measures. Without that structural measures, Manila supposed to be affected 1,300 million US dollar and 1 million people were affected. But in reality, Manila and the Philippine government succeeded to reduce it more than 90% reduced. Uh, for the you know, uh, economic damage, uh, 20, uh, 200 million US, but uh, you know, the number of affected people, more than 99, uh, 98, 99% was uh, reduced. Uh, 97%, sorry. So it is clearly indicating the fact if Philippine government stopped at the level of 1988 before the Mangahan floodway constructed, still even there, even now they have to deal with the 100 million affected people and 1,300 million US dollar economic damage. But it, it didn't happen because the accumulated historical effort was made by the Philippines government. And you know, the, uh, uh, finally, you know, I'm gonna go with the, you know, the, uh, how we can deal with the uh, residual risk. This is an example of our uh, cooperation with the Philippine government for the LDR uh, local disaster risk reduction management plan. And this is a hazard map of Karamba uh, uh, City. So I, we have to indicate or, or you know, uh, explicitly to the community and you know, human society, the, the constituents that the, how much residual risk is existing here with the hazard map. But you know, without stopping until to the, that current status of the residual risk, we have to do both the structural measures to minimize the residual risk and also how we can manage the residual risk by the uh, local government and the private sectors and the community. Okay, thank you so much. This is uh, my first part. And uh, we are now, uh, I'm uh, you know, uh, handing over to Arakida-san for the detail of the eight steps. Thanks so much. So oh, Arakida-san, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sanjay-san. Uh, I... I'm uh, uh, Arakida, uh, research director of ADRC. Uh, everybody, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Uh, I'm very happy to meet online, and uh, I briefly explain the eight steps. Uh, so I conducted uh, this eight-step exercise in several JICA training courses since uh, 2018 for Asian countries, uh, Central Asia, Caucasus countries, African regions, and uh, uh, Latin American regions. So uh, what is the eight step and who use it? The eight step is a practical and feasible method to develop a local disaster risk reduction strategy plan with concrete measures for investment. So uh, it enables leaders and partners of local governments, especially in high risk area, to formulate or improve their local DRL plan in promoting investment and mainstreaming uh, uh, steady implementation of measures to reduce the GDR risk. 
Shift aim to reduce risks, ensuring that local DRR plans are risk informed, considering strategies based on the local context, and including both structural and non structural measures for prevention and mitigation. So, eight steps for developing local DRR plan consists uh, these eight steps. Uh, by compiling these information, it becomes a local DRR plan to reduce disaster risks. I briefly introduce each steps. So this is a step one, collecting local hazard information. Uh, you need to uh, collect uh, information and the related data. So target hazard, what is target hazard? And now uh, we focus to flood, sediment, disaster, earthquake, storm surge, tsunami, and volcanoes. So in this step, uh, please refer to hazard information prepared by national government or higher authorities. And in case of insufficient hazard information in the upper level, uh, utilize uh, historical disaster records instead or efficiently in terms of time and budget. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, step two, understanding local disaster risk. You need to uh, uh, understand or imagine uh, current and future local disaster risk. Uh, what kinds of risk are uh, existing over by overlaying the hazard information collected in step one uh, with information on exposure and the vulnerability of assets? So uh, in this step, you need to recognize existing risk and the possible future risk, which hinder development, and check uh, which areas are under more critical conditions, such as uh, governmental offices, hospitals, and the schools. You need to identify the prioritized risk, which has a large scale impact. Uh, this is a good example of step one to two, by previous training course from Peru. Uh, it shows hazard, exposure, uh, vulnerability, and expected risk. Uh, this is a step three. In this step, you need to confirm existing DRR plans uh, by national and other authorities. In the previous steps, uh, specific area with past events and the future risk are identified. Then, confirms the existing DRR plans to reduce risks, as well as new development plan to increase, make new risks. And refer to urban plans and the DRR plans developed by national governments and confirm the main structural measures in each disaster types. Also, uh, refer to documents which show organizations for DRR and uh, preparedness. Uh, this is an image of step three. So uh, uh, already uh, Nagamisa mentioned this uh, example. Uh, planning ongoing projects are layouted on the targeted area. Uh, this slide shows a previous project for flood management supported by JICA in Metro Manila, Philippines. Also, it includes ongoing projects. Uh, next is uh, step four. Uh, in this step, you need to identify uh, residual disks at targeted area, uh, considering type series. Uh, residual disk mean uh, remaining disk after or during planned measures are implemented. The presence of resist, uh, residual risk implies a contrib uh, continuing need to develop and support effective capacities for emergency services preparedness, response, and recovery, together with uh, uh, socioeconomic policies, such as safety nets and the risk transfer mechanisms as part of a holistic approach. So please make implementation schedule risk of structural measures, because the measures uh, take time to complete and to show effectiveness in protecting risk. Also, uh, please identify that changing the GDR risks uh, corresponding in time series. 
in the uh, lower uh, right figure, after five years, the area in the right hand is protected. Uh, but the others are not. After compression of the plant measure, there is still some unprotected areas. So uh, that is a, a residual risk. And uh, uh, it's an image of step four, a visualization of residual risk after the project completed. Uh, even though the existing project completed, uh, there are still residual risk. This residual risk is our target in the local DRR plan. And appropriated measures will be discussed at the next step. So uh, in this step, uh, you need to list all necessary DRR measures by local government to reduce residual risk identified at step four. So in this stage, uh, what kinds of uh, measures will contribute to reduce uh, risk? And uh, more momentum for DR investment by donor institutions around the world is still low. And the budget is mainly focused on emergency recovery and reconstruction after disaster. According to UNDP, uh, it is estimated that uh, pre-investment of only one dollar can reduce the recovery and the reconstruction cost of seven dollars. A great effect can be produced by allocating your cost of crops and uh, restoration of buildings to advanced disaster prevention investments such as uh, seismic repair, introduction of structural standards, and disaster education. And uh, this figure shows the uh, relationship of the target disaster scale, frequency, and appropriate measures. According to the target disaster type, such as occurrence, uh, frequency, and uh, uh, scale mix measures are needed. For the common disaster, uh, you need to prevent damage by mitigation measures. For the uh, layer disaster, uh, you need to reduce damage by preparedness measures. And the uh, uh, catastrophe is not covered by the other plan. The threshold is different, uh, depends on the other budget and the state of the country. Uh, Class A river and the tsunami occur once for uh, 100 years, are uh, handled by mitigation measures in Japan. Uh, without the mitigation, uh, damage cannot be prevented. Consider force, the mitigation, and the preparedness. And the cons consider structural and the non structural measures. Uh, this is a, a good example of step five by Peru. It shows both mitigation, preparedness, structural measures, and non structural measures, uh, time, short term, mid term, and long term. In step six, we need to carefully think about the fish measures is the most holistically effective uh, from the list of all necessary DRR measures made on the step five. So make a short list to reduce residual risk in consideration of feasibility, cost effectiveness, financial resources. Then seek the best balance of structural and non-structural measures and the effective uh, sequences to implement projects. This is an image of step six, uh, including hazard map and, and risk map and prioritized uh, project to reduce uh, residual uh, risk. And uh, uh, this is an example of Peru. Uh, prioritized projects are planned uh, with consideration of the sequence of implementation. At the step seven, uh, you need to arrange budget allocation in necessary levels, which identify responsible organization to bear the expenses of implementation. In case of lack of budget, uh, actions are necessary to seek for internal or external funds. 
this is a good ex example of step seven by Colombia. Uh, they have a specific fund for DRR measures. So they utilize uh, this mechanism. In uh, step eight, you need to implement DRR measures and review periodically. You may know PDCA, plan, do, check, action cycle. Uh, making plan is a goal, but uh, uh, it's beginning to uh, review and revise the plan, including hazard information and the national DRR plans to adapt to change the situation. So uh, it's an uh, example of Philippines. Uh, annual review mechanism is regulated uh, by the National Act in Philippines. And uh, this is a uh, Iran example. Uh, so uh, by uh, project type, uh, inspection organization is uh, separated. Uh, LDRC conducted the eight step exercise by phase two phase training courses uh, before COVID 19 pandemic. Uh, style is uh, at first a uh, lecture and the site visiting for each step, then group exercise on the uh, big uh, PCM board, and the short presentations in each step to confirm aims of steps, then homework and uh, uh, corrections after exercise. So uh, this is an example of uh, site visiting to run the uh, dive management. And uh, this is a group exercise on the PCM board to create each steps. And uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we shifted to uh, conduct eight step exercise by online. Uh, we set the uh, on-demand lecture for each step. Then uh, on, uh, on dem after on-demand online lecture for reviewing uh, main points, then uh, we utilize an uh, uh, online uh, whiteboard for exercise. After that, it's same for presentation and the homework. Uh, online whiteboard is uh, very useful for group work. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, we conduct uh, lectures and exercise uh, for a different time zone, but uh, uh, they can utilize uh, this online whiteboard at uh, other uh, appropriate time. And uh, after their homework, uh, lecturers, uh, can edit or make recommendations on the board. So it's a good uh, relation. And uh, uh, we conducted this uh, course uh, uh, since 2018, and uh, there are uh, current uh, issues as follows. Uh, that is a low understanding of how investing, investing the on, in disaster prevention in advance can lead the uh, economic development, uh, lack of a concrete understanding of current and uh, future hazard and risks. In order to promote better understanding of each step, appropriate lecturers and the site visits are needed. So now uh, we are updating eight step methodology for future promotion of local DRR plan to contribute to urban resilience. The first is the development of general theory of DRR. Uh, through the uh, transition of international discussions on DRR, uh, the lecture will provide an understanding of the evolution of uh, thinking on DRR up to the recognition of the uh, importance of investment in advanced DRR and to introduce basic concept on its importance and the promotion measure. Uh, second, uh, to understand the basic concepts of uh, disaster risk and the resilience, uh, which are the objectives of investment in advanced disaster reduction. Third, to understand the 
uh, perspectives and points to be considered in promoting investment in disaster reduction in advance. Uh, second point is the eight step uh, development of eight step teaching guidelines. So, uh, eight steps were initially developed using the example of uh, flood disaster. Uh, through various experiences in the previous training courses, we found some issues uh, in needed to be devised. Uh, therefore, we review and update. Uh, contents of the eight steps for flood, tsunami, storm surge, and earthquake uh, as a tool for teaching. And updating uh, materials for easy understanding of each steps for various disaster types. And the uh, JICA and the partner organizations are listing up uh, appropriated uh, visiting sites and lectures for more effective learning uh, each step. By utilization of the list, uh, future training course will be better designed according to the uh, spe uh, speciality of the trainees. So it's an ongoing uh, project uh, between JICA and ADLC. So, uh, that's all I have to share. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Nagami-san and uh, Arakida-san uh, for your presentation. Uh, so uh, there are uh, a, a few questions. Uh, one one question which uh, I think uh, everyone is is concerned about is uh, how can the eight steps help uh, the local government to uh, gain financing uh, for some of the projects or actions that they want to take to increase the resilience. So, uh, do you have any examples, uh, firstly, and uh, any any insights or thoughts on that? I, I think it is for both. So maybe uh, Nagami San, you would like to start. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so, as uh, we have uh, explained to you, the eight step is uh, how we can systematically. I understand and recognize the uh, current uh, status and bottlenecks of the disaster aspect and uh, how we should go from point to the future in the midterm and long, long run in both a uh, structural and uh, non-structural measures. Right, so eight step is a kind of you know the uh, mm, kind of you know the uh, in investigation uh, tool or you know the positioning tool of your current problem and status and what is needed more. It's a kind of you know medical referral to your city, so. This is the initial step. And uh, once we can communicate and mutually understand what is your city's uh, problem and what is needed as a you know, priority, prioritized you know, solution, then we can go further to the uh, you know, actions. And if you really want to get the uh, assistance, not only the technical aspect, but also the financial aspect, then you can uh, reach to JICA as well. Uh, we have uh, uh, two, basically two kinds of financial uh, scheme. One is grant, but the other is uh, uh, the loan, yen loan. And uh, the grant is uh, limited in the, um, in the amount, uh, roughly speaking like uh, that is the maximum amount is like uh, uh, 30 million US and, uh, but uh, you know, yen long line of credit has a kind of much more uh, amount 
uh, limitation, but uh, it all depends on your uh, budgetary capacity to return back the yen loan, of course. But you, yeah, again, you know, in the we have you have to also consult with our uh, diplomatic policy as well, and in many kinds of you know considerations should be done. But basically, that is a rough image of what, what we ha we can do for us to assist you in the not only the technical aspect but also the financial aspect. Thank you, uh, Nagami. san there's a supplementary question to this: Does JICA finance only governments, or uh, does it also finance uh, non-governmental agencies or organizations? Uh, basically, we have a G2BG basis, a bilateral basis, and uh, but we have some uh, exceptions. One thing is the uh, two-step loan uh, through the uh public bank or you know any other entity the lgu or other public entity the local entity can borrow the money through that uh, uh two-step loan the, the, that is one thing but for the private or ngos we have other schemes to collaborate with those uh, uh partners but the, the again the amount is uh, different uh roughly speaking limited uh but uh we can uh do a kind of you know uh budgetary assignment to the those kind of you know uh, type of uh, uh programs as well roughly speaking yeah thank you uh, and another supplementary uh, uh one uh participant is asking that uh, so if there is a city which is interested, can they directly approach the local uh, JICA office? Uh, if, for example, if they all have a DRR plan and then they want to refine it through the eight steps and so on. Uh, so, uh, yes, yes. Uh, so in those cases, uh, we can do a kind of, you know, very uh, impromptu session with a uh, video conference or something like a very quick, uh, you know, uh, communication as well. But uh, also, if you wanted to make it as a project, ODA project, Japan's ODA project, you can communicate with our residential offices in your country. And then we can consider adopt it as a new project. Am I right? Am I answered the question correctly? Uh, yes, 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 I okay, think okay. so. Uh, and th there's another question uh, uh, from uh, from the Pakistan government uh, participant, and they are saying that the National Disaster Management Plan for Pakistan was is ending in 2022, and it was prepared with the help of JICA 10 years ago. So is it possible or uh, that JICA might help in the update um, for the next 10 years? Ah, uh, thank you so much to raise that point. You know, you came to the very uh, timely uh, point because you know now we are working with uh, NDMA Pakistan for updating the new NDMP two. Uh, last week, uh, I, I myself discussed with the NDMA, NDMA the chairman, and uh, we al already initiated the steps to the, do the new project. Thank you for saying that. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, a, a question for Arakita San, uh, uh, this is from a participant from Nepal. Uh, they are saying to understand the disaster risks in step two and collect information in step one, many countries uh, need local level education programs to capacitate them and to take uh, uh, appropriate information so is there any program of course they have asked us if UNDRR has any program to enhance the capacity of the local uh, as well as national level uh, professionals so uh, yes UNDRR does have uh, some programs to to give orientation on DRR concepts of DRR and how and to develop the DRR strategies uh, but uh, I believe uh, Arakida San also mentioned 
capacity development. So if you could uh, explain further uh, about the capacity development that you offer through ADRC for the national government and also for the local government. Yeah, thank you very much for a question from Nepal. Uh, Nepal is uh, one of the ADRC member country, and uh, we uh, already uh, conducted some uh, bilateral project uh, in Nepal in the past. And uh, also uh, we have a visiting researcher program uh, from member countries. So uh, if uh, one uh, researcher, uh, government official uh, come to Japan, uh, we can uh, make uh, some lectures and the training course to make capacity uh, for uh, to make uh, uh, to identify disks and uh, making hazard map by using uh, GIS or other uh, technical tools. So, and also uh, we can conduct a workshop in the local in cooperation with the Nepal government and the universities and the uh, support the making a, a capacity building and to making hazard map and risk map. So uh, for the detail, uh, please contact to ADRC for making uh, future uh, collaborations. Thank you. Uh, so there's another question about, uh, about the kind of measures uh, that uh, are uh, uh, are suggested and then are implemented under the eight step process to to uh, do reduce the disaster risk uh, and to build back better so they are asking uh, uh, does this include solutions such as nature based uh, solutions uh, to resolve climate change impacts uh, uh, for the cities yeah thank you very much for raising that uh, point and uh, uh, NBS or green infrastructure, that kind of thing can be a, a temporary kind of, you know, a complementary uh, measures for the disaster risk reduction for the uh, extensive risk, which should be minimized by the structural measures. Uh, gray infrastructure in, in particular, uh, because the NBS or green infrastructure cannot promise you how much level of uh, physical reduction it can attain with it. So we really think that uh, the once the national government has set the ultimate target, the government should uh, pursue its effort to reach to that ultimate target as a national strategy. But, uh, you know, it takes a long time, like the uh, Philippines, Philippines, even the Manila is in the still the middle way to the uh, ultimate goal. And uh, even Japan is still in the, you know, middle way of the middle of the, you know, uh, long way to go for the total roadmap. Uh, this uh, 400 years we have, uh, spent for the metro, Tokyo Metropolitan uh, flood control, but we have not reached to the end. So in the meantime, we can employ the uh, green infrastructure or NBS as a complementary tool. But you know, if you really, really want to eliminate a certain level of extensive risk with the structural measures, you should not compromise your effort to reach to that ultimate target with the structural measures. That is our message here. Thank you. Uh, there's a question, uh, I think either of you can take this. Uh, do you provide assistance in preparation of feasibility studies for local governments? Yeah, it all depends on the kinds of, you know, hazard and kind of risk in the, what kind of, you know, uh, structure or non-structure measures do you want or do you need? And uh, if uh, your uh, central government, you know, JICA has to go through the NEDA, for example, for Philippines. 
so the the window one stop window uh, agency as a national government and if neither recognize your local government uh, needs and uh, neither recognize the priority as a nation then neither can uh, proceed to jica for the new project uh, regarding the feasibility study assistance in the your lgu it all depends on the total uh, optimization decision by the country central uh, government we cannot you know force you force neda to choose something yes no that's clear uh, again there seems to be a lot of interest in the capacity uh, uh, building on drr and cca for local governments um, they're asking you, do you have any more details on that? Is there anything else you want to share on that? The capacity development for local governments on DRR and CCA, climate change adaptation. Uh, Is it only for government have... officials? Uh, yeah, I mean, things like that. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, today we have just uh, uh, share with you that uh, the basic, you know, the concept of what we can do. So for the in details, like uh, uh, climate change adaptation or you know capacity development, uh, yes, we have uh, several projects in several countries for the uh, LGU uh, officials and the other local level uh, disaster uh, risk reduction agency. Or we have several kinds of you know assistance uh, projects and programs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think now we are at the uh, end. Uh, maybe the uh, there were two, not two questions, but uh, just two requests, which I'll pass on to you uh, from Burkina Faso and Sudan. They are very much interested uh, in in having the JICA program in their country. Um, and uh, uh, one question is, uh, I, and this would be, be the last question. Uh, so for the eight step process, is there any uh, education online course or uh, program uh, to go into more detail uh, of the eight step process to learn about it or maybe even do some research on it? Actually, I have to ask uh, Arakida-san's opinion as well, but uh, right now we cannot provide the uh, 100% online training course. Um, but uh, for the introduction, brochures. For the introduction aspect, we can, uh, we are now uh, sharing in the, our homepage, uh, the brochure of the concept of the uh, eight steps. And uh, yeah, online course, I think. Yeah, we, 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 right now, currently, we cannot provide you the 100% online course. But uh, yeah, in co cooperation with Arakida-san and ADRC, we may be able to in the future. Yeah, uh, we, we need more discussion with JICA. Uh, but, uh, uh, I hope uh, we can provide uh, more detail of eight steps and uh, on online training in the future. Uh, it's just a uh, idea uh, because uh, it's an uh, ongoing process of uh, modification of eight steps. Well, I think, uh, yeah, that sounds, seems like a very interesting idea, especially in this day and age of of COVID and and uh, also a very cost-effective way to to at least have an orientation on the eight steps, if not a detailed program, but an orientation uh, so that people can have a knowledge of the eight steps without ha actually having to travel. So maybe maybe videos or something like that could be good. Uh, of course, uh, to let all the participants know, they this uh, the recording of this uh, webinar will also be available. On the website, so you can um, you can look at it again. You can share it also, 
and uh, we will also share with you the updated uh, PowerPoint slides of, of, of both the speakers, uh, Nagami-san and Arakida-san. Uh, and uh, I see that we are at, at the time now to, to close. Uh, so I would like to uh, thank, um, uh, thank the two speakers, Nagami-san and uh, Arakida-san. And I would like to also thank JICA and ADRC uh, for all their um, uh, sharing and, uh, and uh, support around the world. Uh, and uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank uh, the more than 180 participants from all around the world who have joined the, uh, this webinar. And uh, I hope you uh, find it uh, useful and we look forward to, to the next one. So with that, uh, thank you everyone and goodbye. Thank you so much. See you, everybody. Thank you very much. You have been kind.